So thank you. What I like to do is to kind of discuss what, what you do in your life, um, mm -hmm. given the amount of study that you've done and your understanding of the space. Yeah. Uh, so could we start with diet? Um, so what does your diet look like? And do you have like target macronutrients? Like, are you, are you a keto guy? Are you yeah, so it's, it's, a good, it's a good question. Um, so first of all, I'll say I, uh, this is going to be pretty boring. I do, I, I try to do what we all know we should do. Um, yes, I, I, I uh, for about the last year, I have um, been on, it's probably not a true ketogenic diet, but definitely low carb. Um, uh and I do that in part because it works really well for me. So one thing I think we have to say, especially about diet, is it's very clear that different people respond um, very differently to the same diet, right? That, that's absolutely true. So it's my view that nobody should be eating McDonald's all the time. But, but whether or not for a given individual, right, a, a, a low-carb diet is the best for their individual um, health status. I, I think there's probably pretty profound genetic driven differences in the way people respond to diet. And this is where the mouse studies are a real limitation because almost all of the mouse studies that have been done on diet, on caloric restriction, low protein, keto diet, um, those are almost all done in inbred mouse strains, which don't have genetic diversity. And so we, we really don't have an understanding of, you know, what people are now starting to call personalized nutrition. Uh, how a person's given genotype and environment interacts with their diet. So, so for me, I have found through, you know, <laughs> more years than it probably should have taken that a low carb diet works really well for me. Um, and sometimes I'll do true keto, but most of the time I don't worry about it. I just, I just don't eat simple sugars when I, the carbs that I eat are mostly, you know, nutritious vegetables in even fruit. I've backed off a lot in the last year. So, so I, I really feel good on a low carb diet. Um, so I'm, I, so I feel like it works for me. Um, you know, there are people who will argue for based on the mouse data that, that, that protein restriction is really the way to go. I eat a pretty high protein diet. Um, and maybe it's not, you know, maybe that's not the best thing for me, but, but I, I gotta say, I feel a lot better now than I did 10 years ago. Um, you know, eating what is, would be, you know, by most people's, uh, definition, a pretty healthy diet for an American, right? So, so I think I've, I've, I've eaten pretty healthy for a while, but I really feel good on a, on a low carb diet. So it works for me. Um, but I'm not, I'm not out there trying to, you know, evangelize that everybody should be doing low carb or, or keto. I think you've got to try to find what works for you. You know, again, what I think most people would agree to is that, you know, eating a lot of uh, simple sugars and uh, uh, fast food and things like that is probably not good for anybody. But, you know, you could make an argument by looking at the aging literature that, there's evidence for low protein. There's evidence for fasting mimicking diets. There's evidence for straight caloric restriction. Um, uh, there's evidence for keto diet. So, uh, you know, whether, so I don't feel like the mouse data is conclusive enough to really start recommending to pe people that they should pick one of those diets and, and, and stick to it and because it's gonna help them live longer. I don't think, I really don't think we know how effective um, any of those dietary interventions are gonna be for aging in people. Uh, so I would say find, you know, what, what allows you to feel comfortable, not feel hungry all the time. And this is the other thing I will say. I know a lot of my colleagues will argue that, you know, fasting mimicking diets and um, low protein diets are, are really what, they sh what sh people should be doing. Some of them have written books on it um, and maybe they're right. The other thing I'll say is they can't stop talking about it, which makes me think they're hungry. So I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if, the, if it's, a, you know, Again, right. and there are side effects associated with these diets, right? Um, uh, and I think we should be honest about what those side effects are and being hungry all the time, I would certainly um, consider a side effect. So I think you got to find what works for you. Right, cool. And I just, do you do any intermittent fasting? Do you do any fasting? No. I haven't, um, you know, I, I guess I've kind of thought about it, but, um, but I never have really, I mean, I've tried fasting, you know, a couple of times in my life and it just was not my thing. And I didn't ever really try to stick with it. So, you know, 
I, again, I, I feel pretty good where I'm at. I'm not saying I yeah. won't try intermittent fasting at some point or fasting mimicking diet, but uh, I'm pretty happy with, with the lifestyle that I've got now and I feel pretty good. So I don't really see any need to, to change it at this point. And I do exercise regularly. That's the other thing that I think, you know, everybody knows is an important part of uh, a healthy lifestyle. I don't think you can... I don't think you can overestimate how how important it is. I mean, I, I really think that regular exercise is critical for for you know many aspects of health. And you know, I, again, you could you could debate what type of exercise is best. To, so the starting point is it doesn't matter. Just do something is my advice. But right. again, I think you can try to find out what works for you, right? So for me, you know, I've always enjoyed resistance training uh, with weights. That works for me. I think there's pretty good. Um, evidence that uh, that at least as we get older, maintaining muscle mass is important and resistance training is a good way to do that. We also live in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. So we got out and did a lot of hiking this year, mm -hmm. which with COVID was something you could actually go and do, get outside. So, you know, that's an enjoyable way for me to get exercise. Um, and now it's ski season. So I get up and go skiing, you know, when I can. So again, mm -hmm. I think a combination of, you know, being relatively moderate in your diet and exercising regularly um, is pretty good. And I th actually, I think it's an open question, even from the, the literature in mice and especially in people, whether these, you know, what, what some would call more extreme dietary interventions like intermittent fasting um, will give you any added benefit if you're exercising regularly. We, nobody's ever really looked at that question. And, and I, I'm a little bit skeptical that, that it's going to do better. Like, I think you can probably get most or all of those same benefits from, from regular exercise and not overeating, but that, that's just a guess on my part. So, you know, I could be wrong, but that's what I do. And, um, and I, you know, I feel pretty good. And, and honestly, I haven't had any significant uh, health problems and I'm going to be 50 in February. So I feel like I'm doing okay. That, that's really good. Do you take any supplements? Can I ask? Um, not regularly. I, um, again, it's something I've thought about. Uh, and I think, again, you can make a, you can make a, 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 a rational argument for a variety of different supplements. Some, you know, based on literature for effects on aging, some based on, you know, a lot of people have vitamin D deficiency. And we've heard a lot about that with COVID right hmm. now, but I have not ever gotten to the point where I felt like I was convinced that, um, that, that the data was strong enough for clear beneficial effects in most people that I have, have decided to do that. Again, I may change my mind uh, going forward, but at this point, I don't take any regular supplements. Okay, so if I was to ask, what is your, like, your top priority habit? Like the, the one thing that you would absolutely have to do to maintain your health? I mean, we, we talked kind of all the things you do. What would you put? Exercise, absolutely. And, exercise yeah. is the top. Yeah. And again, I don't, you know, I try to do a variety of different types of exercise. So, you know, I'll lift weights a, a two to three times a week. I'll get outside and go for a hike. Well, not so much now that it's raining, but you know, we would go once or twice a week. Um, so variety, I think at least for me is really important not to get bored uh, with the exercise, but yeah, I think I would go crazy if I couldn't be active. Right. Excellent. Okay. So Dr. Cabrin, thank you very much. That's been very helpful. Uh, can you tell people where they can find out some more about your work and what, what's what going on in your lab? Sure. Yeah. So, so our lab website is caberlinelab.org. And then if people are interested in the dog aging project, mm -hmm. uh, the website for that is dogagingproject.org. And you're still recruiting for that? Yes. So um, yeah, absolutely. We are actively recruiting for, for dogs to come into the study. Um, at least for now, we are only able to accept dogs in the United States. It is, it is my hope that uh, within the next year or two at the outside, that we'll be able to expand that internationally. There are a variety of challenges associated with, with taking it from a, you know, all within the US to an international project. But, um, but it is our hope that, that, that we'll be able to enroll international dogs at some point in the not too distant future. Excellent, that would be great. Okay, so thank you so much for joining us and uh, I hope to get the opportunity to speak to you again. Sure, it's my pleasure. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, yeah, thanks, bye. Bye. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. 
Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.